Hey guys, I thought I'd do a quick video of my project I just finished. This is a quadcopter based off the HoverThings HT-FPV frame. And as the name indicates, this is a frame geared towards FPV flying. Um, as you can see, the arms in the front are more swung out to get them out of your way of your video cameras that you have sitting here and your FPV camera sitting on top. Eventually I'll have a GoPro camera sitting right here, so um, that's what that little platform is for. On the very bottom of your um, frame you have your power area, and in there I went ahead and bought the uh, little $6 power distribution board and would highly recommend doing that versus creating your own wiring harness, which um, can be kind of cumbersome. Um, as far as all my equipment goes, I stuck with DJI uh, innovations for my motors, my, my ESCs, and my um, flight controller. Uh, the motors are 920 kV motors, um, which are typical. I think that that's the only motor that they make. Um, the electronic speed controllers are 30 amp speed controllers. Um, and then, like I said, I have the... Uh, the DJI NASA um, in the middle there and I really enjoy this flight controller um, it's a nice flight controller it has a lot of cool features that my other flight controllers didn't have uh, one of those being is I've got the DJI NASA GPS unit up on top which when you flip a button on your controller um, your quadcopter will hover in one spot and not move from that area it's pretty cool the one thing I did change on the GPS unit was a stand. Um, in my eyes, the stand was just asking for this GPS unit to get broken. Um, basically, it sits up on top of your frame, and the GPS unit sits on the very tip top with no protection. So when I saw this stand from ReadyMade RC, I jumped on it. As you can see, it protects the GPS unit really well. It's real deep, so nothing's going to hit the top of it. And for only $9, it couldn't be beat. I'm pretty sure this is made by MakerBot, which adds a little cool factor to it, too, because I've never really seen a, seen anything made by MakerBot before. Now, on the, the NASA, the power comes into it through this little unit right here. It's called the VU. Um, and this is where you will plug in a USB cable to program your DJI NASA through a uh, computer. On the very top of it, you have a, a really strong LED and it will display, like if you're in altitude hold mode, if you're in GPS mode, or manual mode. It will also blink rapidly red if your battery is too low. Um, unfortunately, I can't really see that from the ground, so that's kind of wasted on me. Now, as far as my FPV gear goes, um, all my FPV gear is from Immersion RC. And um, as you can see here, this is the 5.8 gigahertz uh, transmitter. And I do have a Cloverleaf um, antenna on it. This is the antenna that the transmitter will come with. And I tried this, trans this uh, antenna with this transmitter for about a week and realize pretty fast that I needed something a little bit better because when you turn or bank this quadcopter um, your signal drops um, so much to where you get a lot of snow on the on the picture and it could be a little scary when you're when you're flying that way so I went ahead and replaced it with this clover, clover leaf and haven't had any issues since the other thing that became pretty apparent is when you're flying FPV you lose track of time and how much battery life you have so I realized pretty fast I needed some kind of on-screen display so I went ahead and got the Immersion RC's um, Easy OSD and uh, this is the main board here the overlay board and uh, this overlays the video with all your information like altitude, your distance, your speed your battery life and whatnot. Uh, on the very tip top of this is your GPS unit for it. 
in the very front you have your buttons where you can cycle through your menuing systems you could pick your alarms and, and um, things like if you want to set an alarm for um, how far you want to go or your altitude you want to go or how much battery life you want you want to come back on you can have it all set up to where it'll flash on the screen warning you that you've reached those limits um, as far as the uh, the board that reads the uh, your battery power um, here it is in the back of the unit and this reads basically like how much voltage you have left um, on your battery as far as the camera is concerned this camera um, I got from Future Hobbies and um, it's a CCD camera and I think the guts of the camera are from Sony and the actual model name or the, uh, the actual um, model number is called a uh, it's a FH C55 5V. And uh, so that 5V is for 5 volts, so it's a 5 volt camera. And it has uh, 550 uh, lines of resolution. So it's a nice camera. It gets the job done. It's not HD or anything like that, but on my goggles, um, it looks pretty crisp. As far as my radio gear goes, um, I'm a big Futaba fan from way back. And uh, so I went ahead and stuck with uh, the Futaba radio gear. I have that. And then I've got the uh, T8J um, radio. And um, I like this radio. The, uh, the menu is really crisp and easy to read. Um, it's easy to get around with the little knob here on the side. Uh, scrolling through your menus. It has quite a few, I think it's like three different um, three-way switches, which is really nice. And uh, so it's a, overall a really nice eight-channel radio. Um, I know that Futaba has another radio that um, can be upgraded to, I think it's like 14 channels. But... Um, it's also a whole lot more money. It's like 500 bucks or something like that, which the amount of money I spent on that radio was nowhere near that much. So that concludes the quadcopter, but um, I'd like to show you my goggles real quick, which are the Fat Shark um, Dominator goggles. And these goggles, um, they're a little on the, the pricey side, uh, but for what you get, um, it's well worth the cost. Um, when you buy these goggles, they do not come, or at least the place I bought them from, they do not come with any kind of uh, receiver. So you do have to buy the receiver, and you install it right behind that little door. Again, I replaced the, the antenna with my Cloverleaf antenna. Um, so that's another little extra cost that you have to consider when you're buying these. Um, the volume buttons, the channel buttons, the the brightness buttons and whatnot, um, they're all nice here on top. They're easy to get to. Um, they're even they're raised up so you can feel them when you have the goggles on. Um, the eye cups are really nice. Um, I can wear these for long extended periods of time and uh, they do not hurt my eyes or the bridge of my nose which I always worry about whenever I get goggles. Um, there's the battery that comes with. Um, I forget exactly what the MAH is on it, but you can you can use them for a very long time without having to charge it, and then this is where, this is where you plug it in on the side there. Um, the goggles come with this nice case, um, so you can protect, you know, you can always make sure that your goggles are protected. Um, when you invest in this much money in your goggle system, you want to make sure that they're nice and protected. As far as my batteries, um, I bought all my batteries from a place called Hobby Parts, and that's with a Z. Um, and I chose their Sky Lipo 3000 mAh batteries. And uh, with these batteries, typically I can get anywhere from 8 to 10 minutes of flight time, depending on how I'm flying. Um, and what I'm doing, if I'm hovering, I can get a lot longer um, than if I'm doing a lot of quick flying and and whatnot. Um, for my FPV gear, 
I've chosen to go with this 460 mAh battery from ReadyMade RC and uh, it's real light and real small and compact um, and this lasts quite a quite a while before you have to recharge it um, so that's a really good choice for all your FPV equipment and it plugs right in it's already got the the connector and everything to plug right in to your FPV gear so that should do it for my video and I hope you enjoyed it <laughs>